robots need to build uh, what we call internal representation of the world, as we do. For example, in your head and mine, there's a, this map of this floor. Um, we know where the kitchen is, where the office is. The robot needs to do this um, same process. Uh, we use sensors, but also we use some um, machine learning as well. The problem with this here um, is that the uncertainty in the sensor and the uncertainty in the machine learning uh, output both of them combined will make the internal representation of the world uh, uncertain. Uh, now, if you, want to you to, if you want this robot to do some uh, task, and this task might be interacting with people, uh, do uh, maybe uh, safety critical uh, operations, this uncertainty is problematic. So you need a way to make the robot do its task in a reliable way under uncertainty. So we want to do visual uh, learning and understanding of the surroundings, which can take into account that the sensor is noisy, the machine learning which we use to sense the world is noisy. So now how can we live with this uncertainty? Uh, you can, we can split this project to multiple uh, topics. One of them is how to build this internal representation. We call that uh, uh, simultaneous localization and mapping. Um, and when you add a machine learning layer on top, that will be a uh, um, semantic uh, simultaneous localization mapping. How do I not just build this 3D map of the world, uh, how do I know the elements, the objects? I know this is a TV, this is a chair, so we have this semantics layer on top. Now add another complexity where there's a bit of uncertainty about these uh, objects in the world. So this is the, the semantic... Uh, the inner representation of the world. The second, the second uh, topic in this project, uh, if we can call it the second uh, topic, because there's multiple PhDs and multiple topics, but I will, I will group some of them in one group, which we call we we say we we call uncertainty estimation. Um, it's a it's an interesting topic. How do I uh, quantify uncertainty? I can ask you. Uh, how many, uh, what's the population of Australia? You, c you can say, you will say uh, 20 million plus minus. You were able to quantify your uncertainty with this plus minus. For us, it's easy to do that with this, with this kind of a range. We want to do something similar when we ask the robot, is this an apple or not? So they will say, yes, it's an apple. I am sh certain 50%. This means the robot is not certain at all. So the second topic is how do we quantify, how do we estimate uncertainty out of the machine learning which we use on the robot. This is crucial because if I want the robot to do a task and the, the perception is not certain, I can abort. Don't do it. It's, it. You are not certain enough to do or not confident enough to do the task. So. In summary, the project focuses on how we build an internal representation and add a layer of semantics and take uncertainty into account when we do that. The other part is when we use sensors and we use machine learning on the robots, how do we quantify the uncertainty in the output of these uh, machine learning components, which help us in uh, make the execution of the task more reliable, more safe, more trustworthy. So I, I, I would say that's the, the summary of this project. To give a concrete example, we want to enable uh, machine learning components which we use inside our robots. And for this uh, scenario, I will use the driverless car as an example. We want to enable these components to say when they don't know, when they are not capable to perform the task. Because currently, if you ask an object detector to detect all the objects in the view, it will happily do so, but some of them will be wrong. Some of them will be missing. One of the PhDs in this project is to enable this components not just to do its task, but also to say or to quantify how good or how bad it is in that situation. So let's take the example of uh, driving in a foggy environment. If you are as a human driver, if the conditions are not suitable to, for you to drive, you are not confident driving in these conditions, you will say, okay, I will stop until the conditions are uh, improved because you judged your own ability to drive in that conditions. Now we want to enable a driverless car to do the same, to say, I don't want to drive in these conditions because my sensors, my ab abilities are not matched to what I see in, in the conditions. So 
Um, this, is a, this is one example where quantifying uncertainty and confidence in the performance, we call this self-assessment, introspection. Um, and it's a difficult task uh, for a robot to do. So, um, let's, let's, take, let's go back to you as a human. How do you decide that you are confident in the current conditions or not? Maybe you use historical uh, uh, um, data. You, you, you know yeah, the previous time you, wa you were in these conditions, you were not able to drive as well as you want. So there's this uh, there's distillation of, of experience from the past. For a robot uh, to do so, we need to encode this history in some way. And the history is from when we trained the network. So for example, I want an object, a pedestrian detector on my car. So what I do, I go to something called a training data set. I collect all uh, training images to train the model. But the problem with this situation, and here is the challenge, is I can't cover every possible conditions the future will, will, will throw at me in this data set. It will be infinite data set. So what I did here is I sampled what I think the, the, the car will, will experience when I put the object detector on the car. I sampled from, from that and have built a training data set. The problem is this training data set cannot cover every possible future scenario. This is the challenge. Uh, um, in, for, a, uh, for, a, for a human driver, maybe it's easy, a foggy, a snow, a, a rain. But for a, a, a machine learning on a car, um, the variety of conditions is much, much more than that. Uh, um, using, data, uh, using data sets to solve this problem is not enough. So what we do here is we look inside the neural network. Like it's, it's exactly like looking inside your brain and the activities of the brain and see that this pattern we are seeing now is not uh, familiar. It's, uh, we, haven't, we haven't experienced this situation before. The performance might be OK. The car might perform as expected. However, our, our uncertainty about that is big because Looking inside the, the neural network, we, we find that uh, the, ne the network is experiencing a new novel input. So the, the uncertainty is coming from that what I am seeing is not represented in the training data. However, I can't say if I am going to do good or bad on it because it's a new input. I don't have uh, uh, a supervisor during execution. We call this there's no ground truth labels. So. I am making decisions as a car. I'm making a decisions. Uh, I don't know if I am doing well or, or not. That's a problem. What we are uh, doing in our research is we are looking inside the neural network and detecting when we think the network is not doing as good as it's supposed to do. So this is what we call self. We are enabling the network to not just predict, but also say how confident or not confident it is in the, in the, in the output. Um, yeah, I can summarize it in this way. Yeah. People are impressed by the performance uh, boost we got from uh, deep learning or machine learning in the last few, um, last few years. And everybody is chasing a perfect object detection, for example, or a perfect uh, machine learning component to put on robots. Our argument, or my argument, is perfection is not possible. We need to know how to live with failures. Failures should be an option. Um, you will never get, you, you will never get uh, a machine learning uh, module or neural network that will not make a mistake. You can chase as much as you can a perfect neural network, but if you are deploying machine learning on robots in the real world, the conditions and the inputs is uh, unpredictable. We don't, we can't predict every uh, possible input. And we are, because we are doing supervised learning, this means we use the training data set to train this module. So m my push or the, 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 where I hope in the future we will get to is that although the, the machine learning which we use for robots are not perfect, we can handle that. Why? Because we can estimate their uncertainty. As soon as you know the uncertainty of the, the, the machine learning component, 
if it is high uncertainty, you can discard that output and use uh, a safety uh, behavior to, to perform the task. But if the neural network is certain about the prediction and you know that it's correct, this means you can act on it. So in summary, failure should be an option for machine learning, which are used on robots, as long as you are able to estimate and quantify the uncertainty in their predictions. Yeah. Our answers are always attached to some level of, of, of confidence. Um, and it's easy to, I'm not sure if when kids do that. Like you ask a kid, uh, can you guess how many, um, I don't know, chocolates bar in this, in this jar? I'm not sure when they can say, okay, 1,000, but I'm not sure. Or you see what I mean? Like, um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah but yeah. It's, it's, uh, this, this ability, to, to express how much, how, to, to quantify really, it's to, to tell me how much confident or not confident you are about your answer. So this is two things, your answer and then there's another thing I want to attach to it so I know what to do with your answer. Now take a whole that, all of that, put it on a robot and make the, the neural network as an artificial neural network yeah. without, uh, yeah, without quantifying uncertainty um, it's problematic to, to use them. I, I use this example. This is a very good example. Imagine you have a very advanced uh, machine, washing machine. Really advanced. But every <laughs> once in a while, like assume every 100 times you use it, it ruins your cloth. Will you buy it? Like it's, it's a perfect, because what I mean by perfect, let's assume it, it uh, it, it doesn't need you to program the, to, to, it, it will sort your cloth, it will take care of its fabric, independent of your input experiment. But let's assume every 100 times it make a mistake, it ruin everything. Can you live with this washing machine? I don't think anybody will buy it. So this is where people are looking at robot. People are looking at robot in this way. I want, I want a robot which can, which is very specialized, very good at doing a particular task, but I don't want it to make a mistake. I don't think we will get to that place. The more intelligent your appliance or a robot, the more room for mistakes need to be there. So this is, this is a balance. I'm, I'm not sure if this is correct. Yeah, I, yeah. This is, I, I was thinking about this the other day. Maybe it is, yeah, I don't know. It's, a, it's up to for debate. So are, can you come, yeah, this is the, I think that's a good point. Can you trade off intelligence with mistakes from time to time? Like, um, I, 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 my cattle is really stupid, but I am sure it will do its job every time exactly. Like there's no intelligence in the cattle, so this is mean I don't tolerate any mistake. I, I, want, I want this robot, this driverless car, to say I, don't want, I can't drive in these conditions. This is, this is the, the whole purpose of this program, is um, we, should be able to we should be able to live with imperfection in robotics by allowing the robot, by allowing the autonomous system to express its inability to perform the task instead of going in and ruin the, the cloth. Because if, that w if we go back to that washing machine example, if the washing machine says, this time I will not do my job, please don't, don't press start, that's perfect. That, we solve the problem in that case. Uh, if, if the washing machine doesn't have that ability, it will ruin the cloth um, in, that, in that scenario, and then you will not, you will not be happy. But if the, if the robot is able to say, no, this time I don't take control. Um, so fully driverless cars without ability to handing, handing over control, maybe, yeah. I don't know, maybe it, it will not happen.